So we're going to make a classic shoot 'em up, kind of like Invaders or Galaga. And right now I imported some sprites. You can make sprites. These are just um, 16 by 16 pixel sprites. And I'll show you the import settings on them real quick. So each sprite has um, single sprite mode. It's a sprite, obviously. There's no packaging tag. There are 16 pixels per unit because it's a 16 by 16. I want the sprite to fill up one of these Unity units. And um, point filter, which makes sure that it's not blurry. That's very important when working with sprites. And true color, make sure that the colors I chose are the exact colors that are used. So that's basically it for all my sprites. I made some enemy ships, I made the player ship, and I made bullets. So let's start off by dragging out your ship. And if we look at it in play mode, we're going to have just a simple um, spaceship sitting in nothing. Now for the color of space, I'm going to want to find a cool, maybe purple color. So I'm just going to look up an image of space and try and steal the color of it real quick. I'm not looking for a black so much as like a purple. And I found a pretty cool picture, so I'm just going to choose the eyedropper and then steal that color of purple. Maybe even like a darker shade. But along those lines. I mean, that's pretty cool actually. That can be my space background now. You might want to choose black or whatever color you want. If you make it black, you can't make your spaceship black, which probably was a bad design choice on my part. But, you know what? Whatever. <laughs> so before we actually make the ship move, I kind of want to make the background look cool. So I'm going to make a particle system real quick. And under our particle system for shape, I'm going to change the emission to an edge to give us a straight line that we can just drag. And I'm also going to rotate it now to be zero in the X, so we get this kind of straightforward moving um, thing. Now to give the effect that we're moving forward at all times without actually making our guy move forward, we're going to turn this and our Z to be 180 degrees. And that will make um, everything go down. And we're gonna stretch this a little bit over the line. And now, even if we play now, it's going to kind of look like we're moving um, we're moving forward at all times, which is pretty cool. Let's take our particle system and change our, um, our layer from sorting layer default at 0 to negative 1. And that will ensure that it's going to be behind everything else. And we're also going to change our particle to the sprite default so we get these little squares. We're going to lower their size under um, under start size. Start size, there we go. We're going to lower their size. Something um, pretty small, maybe 0.1. That looks pretty good. And we're just going to increase the amount, I guess. Depending on how this looks. All right, cool. Now it looks like we're moving forward through space, I guess. That's good enough. Okay. I think we can um, pre-warm our system. So when we get in, it's already, yeah, that's what we want. Make sure you pre-warm it so there's already stars in the background when you get in. That way it doesn't look like um, the stars are just starting to come. That has a really nice effect to it, I think. Okay, so we have our particle system. Now we can work on our player movement. So what we're going to need is a physics 2D rigid body with no gravity. And we're going to need a physics 2D box or circle collider or polygon collider. I'm going to do a polygon collider. And we're going to need to adjust this to be the right size about. That looks good. Make sure it's within bounds. You don't want your player to get angry if he just dodges a bullet and it counts as hitting him. I usually try and make my colliders a little bit inside of the player even. So when you get hit, it really looks like you got hit. It doesn't look like it just skimmed by you. And that's that's our spaceship, I'd say. Let's start making it move. 
So we're going to need to make a new script and we're going to call it spaceship. I probably should have opened up Mono Develop before. My bad. I sense a crash coming on on Mono Develop's part. So I guess while that opens, um, I was thinking of even making another one of these. So I'm actually going to duplicate this, and oh, it's opening now. One of them's not responding. Uh, Mono Develop. Okay, so. We're going to take our second one, actually, and make it speed, maybe like a 3, so it's slower, maybe 2 even. And we're going to make its size even smaller, so like half of it, maybe 0.05. And now the end result is that we have like these two layers of stars coming in now, which looks really nice in my opinion. Now it, now it really looks like we're moving forward at all times. We're also going to make their lifetime a little bit longer. That's a good space effect, I'd say. Um, now our mono develops finally opened, and it looks like we are good. Okay. So we're going to need to get our rigid body 2D, call it RB. This is usually standard when you're making a controller, and we're going to need to make it an update. We're going to put our controls. So if, um, actually, we're going to make ourselves accelerate in whatever direction we hold down in basically. So we're going to do uh, rb.addForce new vector 2. And within our new vector 2, we're going to add our input get axis horizontal. There you go. And um, our, for our y, we're not going to add anything. For now, and now we're going to multiply this by our um, speed, which is currently non-existent, but now it is. We're going to make it public too, so we can actually work with it. Now it's also important that in our awake, RB equals get component rigid body 2D. That's important, so we actually know what our rigid body 2D is. If we go back to here, and we don't know what's wrong with that. Is rigid body not? What error am I getting? Oh, I need to find this either. Okay. Now, when we get in, um, if we move left and right after setting our speed down here to like maybe 10, we'll actually start to move left and right and get this like smooth moving animation. Which, you know, it, it feels alright. I feel like we're not accelerating quite fast enough. But then if we make it you know, any higher, we're gonna be, we might be accelerating too fast. And there's also no friction wearing us down too, which is kind of a problem. Or at least not a lot of it, for that matter. So to make sure we have friction on our spaceship, we're going to increase our linear drag to maybe like 1. And now um, set our speed to 20 as a standard. That feels a lot better. And now we'll actually come to a stop if we were to stop moving. That wasn't even holding down there, we just came to a stop. We have much more control over our spaceship now, and we can properly uh, move left and right. Now we got to make it so we can't go and exceed our boundaries. But I guess first, before we do that real quick, we're just going to completely copy this line, paste it in, and now we're going to cut out... Actually, we're just going to delete this little comma zero, and we're going to put the zero comma in the beginning of this. And we're going to change our axis horizontal to axis vertical. And now, our result is we can move up and down, and we can move left and right, and we have really good control of our spaceship, basically. And there you go. Pretty nice, actually. So now, 
we can put some boundaries on. So I'm going to call this um, space um, bg1 and bg2, I guess. Not really sure what else to call them. We're also going to say this scene is space. And we need to make boundaries. So we're going to make a new empty control shift n, center it out, and call it. Um, my hands are so dry, I just got out of the pool. Alright, bounds. So in our bounds, we want to have box colliders. So our box colliders are just going to set the farthest we can move to the left and right. And in order to do this, we'll just make new box colliders and pull them to the left and right. As easy as that. Um, so you just change your offset to whatever you want it to be, and then you change your size to whatever you want it to be. My bad. You want to change your size in the Y for these. And just by having these now, we can no longer um, go off the map. Oh, as you can see, we're also rotating, which maybe you like that. <laughs> Kind of cool if you want to add like an E and Q button to like rotate your ship. Um, but we're going to make it not rotate for now. So to do that, just lock in our rotation under constraints on rigid body, under ship, and freeze rotation Z. So now we already have a cool uh, system where we can move around and rotate as long as we just don't hit the walls. And you can always make it so if you go left all the way, you come out on the right side. That's a common feature in these types of games, but... Once again, that's up to you. So we have our bounds here. We also want to make it so we can't go too far forward or too far down. So I guess we'll add some more box colliders in, which I guess will be the gist of this video. <laughs> Move these up. This time you want to make your X size the big one. And we're actually just going to copy this component and paste it in as a new as a new uh, component. And now we're going to move our offset down. There you go. So we have bounds around our camera now. When we get in, we can't go any further than the screen of what we see. And we're going to take our bounds now, and we're going to put it onto a layer, and we're going to call it um, player bounds. And what we're going to do with this in the next video is make it so only our player is restricted to these boundaries and our enemies can come through the top. So next video, we'll start enemies and maybe some shooting. So see you next time.